Good morning, it's Jonathan Barrett with the uh, Week Ahead Report. It's uh, currently Monday the 29th of August, the current time is uh, 6.40. Okay, uh, quite an interesting uh, night. Uh, obviously Bernanke came out with his comments and we've got uh, Storm Irene uh, heading down or heading up the east coast of America. Uh, a little bit of concern there, obviously. Uh, but the um, hurricane has now been downgraded to a storm, but uh, still uh, a lot of devastation there, as you can see. Alrighty, ho uh, looks like the market uh, also will be open. That's what I have heard. Uh, the U.S. equity market in New York will be open, uh, so business as usual. But um, obviously, uh, still concerns uh, over there uh, on the storm. Um, let's uh, pour our attention now to Bernanke's comments. I guess that's the key at the moment. Uh, Bernanke's comments on. Friday from uh, Jackson Hole. Uh, look, at the end of the day, I think it, it does make good common sense to see what he's done. He hasn't given the QE3. That's something we suggest would not happen. He has, in fact, turned around and said they'll monitor it. They've got some issues on inflation. But as it stands, I think it's a, it's a steady approach. And uh, I think he's really allowing the US economy to work out on its own as to what really is going to happen. As a result of the speech, we saw the equity market come under uh, quite a bit of pressure and then rebounded as people started to think, well, we don't need that handout, we can work on it. And I think given the themes that were written in our past bulletins, that uh, this is the correct play. Uh, no more stimulus, no more handouts. The company, the sorry, the country must stand on its own two feet. That in itself will provide confidence for everybody else to suggest that um, you know, the taxpayers' money won't be used for stimulus. In fact, they should be used for other things. Uh, one thing I'll note, though, I think uh, the chances of more fiscal stimulus, I think, are certainly on the cards. And I think uh, that's what Bernanke will be focusing on, is more of the fiscal side of things rather than the monetary side. And it has mentioned in the next meeting <coughs> that they will extend that for another two days, extra two days. Now, that's more of a, I suppose, more of a cabinet, more of a discussion that uh, I think that they'll be working on. So keep an eye out on news for fiscal stimulus in the US. Uh, but how will it affect the markets uh, with his speech? Uh, I think it'll be quite supportive. In fact, I think you'll find that the market will take that as a green light to say that things are going the right way. Yes, things are slow, but we're getting out of it. So let's see how that unfolds. Okay, as you can see, uh, major headlines. Um, uh, Bernanke wants to see consensus on is issue, uh, easing. Libyan rebels push Gaddafi loyalists in search, so that seems to be one. Uh, they are looking for production to pick up. Um, everything else, industri China's industrial profits rise 28%, the nominal economy. So uh, as you can see, a bit of a mixed bag out there, but uh, a lot to uh, look at. Uh, concerns in Europe still remain as uh, Lagarde uh, urges recapitalization of European banks. That is a major issue. Uh, we might get more news on the Basel Accord there uh, to see what actually happens there. So uh, I think you'll get a little bit more discussion on what happens uh, in that front. Um, I guess that's uh, on that. Let's have a look at the markets. Everything we know, US economy, um, yes, we know all that, which is fine. So um, I think of anything there, energy, there we go, oil being supportive, um, and uh, oil may fall next week as Libya rebels move to resume output. Uh, we know that, so quite happy about that. Okay, let's have a look at the markets now. And um, I guess the, the most important thing, let's have a look at the dollar index, very steady, 74.14, um, right on those lows. Uh, look, it, it, in my mind, see how it breaks, but uh, that's, the, that's the support, see what happens. There is a little bit of divergence there, but we really need to see some work happening there in terms of dollar supportiveness. So uh, let's see. But, but um, yeah, if, if over the next day we don't get that supportive, then that divergence isn't as strong as, as what we first thought. So given what Bernanke did say, um, you can see that the Dow, though it hasn't opened on futures trading today, 11,279, and uh, you can see the volatility uh, that we had, in fact, had. There we go. Look at that. Down initially, 10,900, then straight back up. And uh, I think that, uh, in my mind, is supportive of how people are actually seeing uh, what's going to occur. Um, one thing I didn't do is check uh, all around the market. So let's, let's just quickly go back, get a bit of an overview. I always think it gives us a bit of a set there. Uh, for the war report. Uh, the Dow was up 134, the S&P was up 17. The top 50 was down 26, FTSE down 1, CAC was down 31, and the DAX was down 46. Close to home, the S&P was up, uh, SPY was up 21, 4218. Um, you do have to take that into stride. Remember uh, that, uh, remember that uh, the UK markets didn't have the benefit 
of Bernanke's talk, so I'd probably expect a little bit of a lift uh, there. Um, on the commodities front, uh, Brent crude was up 0.74, or 111.36. Uh, West Texas, 85.37. Uh, looking at the ag market, corn was up 23 at 7.67. Cotton strong night up 133 at 104.32. Wheat was up 9 at 7.97. Uh, soybeans up 30, great move there, uh, 14.23. Uh, let's uh, hopefully see that uh, continue. Rough rice, uh, 17.31, and keep an eye on that rough rice uh, a break through that 17.40, 50 area, sends it higher. Copper strong night, 4.11 and three quarters, held at that double bottom. Uh, gold strong night, up 34 at, uh, in fact, that's up a little bit higher, it's 18.26. Uh, so that was a little bit low there, but uh, very strong there in terms of that front. Okay, now let's go back onto the market. Um, as we can see, as we can see, um, uh, the local market looks relatively strong. Probably expect that to uh, pick up today, and uh, don't mind that at all. Um, looking at the currencies, we've talked about that. The Aussie dollar, uh, 105.79, and it's quite steady at the moment. I think expectations are the market will want that US dollar to weaken uh, if uh, if it's what Benenke said it is as is. So uh, let's see if that Aussie does a trade higher. Uh, looking at the euro over there, 144.92, very steady as you can see, looking for a breakout opportunity there. Gold was the big mover, 18.26, and uh, as you can see, quite strong there, uh, quite a rebound, and that's something we did discuss on Sky, that uh, the fundamentals haven't changed, the market's just cleared out, so the expectations are for gold perhaps to continue. Silver, the underdog, strong move, 41.30, and uh, as you can see there, it's uh, slowly getting back there. A lot of divergences there, not divergence that the stochastics are a bit overcooked. Let's see how it unfolds, but uh, that's the immediate range there, which is pretty good. So 38.72 is the low end. Only a break of that will confuse things. Look at the crude market, 85.54 mark in time. That looks steady. I do believe these are supportive, and these are low, lower end of the price for crude. I think this is quite good, so uh, I like that. Uh, copper held at that double bottom, as we know. And as you can see, a little bit higher. That's that double bottom, so uh, it's a like. Just have a look at some of the softs. And uh, soybeans slowly looking to break out through that top side. And uh, we've been supportive of that. And uh, once it finally gets through that area, uh, then uh, up she goes. Uh, wheat's quite similar, uh, 761. Slowly trying to, but not as positive as the soybeans. Uh, corn up 21, quite strong, up 2.94% and looks like that is testing those highs. So uh, that is certainly a like. Okay, let's have a look at the economic calendar. It is the week ahead report. And uh, what do we have? Just move that there. Okay, this week the main bit of data is out of Friday. That's the uh, non-farm payrolls. But uh, as we stand, uh, a bit of a recap. United States uh, consumption on Friday night was up 2.2. Uh, gross domestic products uh, price uh, was up 3.3. Uh, so if anything there, the consensus was 2.3, that's pretty good. Uh, GDP was only up 1%, the market was looking for a little bit, something a little bit better uh, on that. Now on Monday, what have we got? German CPI, which will be quite important, personal consumption in the states and income, um, and uh, also uh, pending home sales, so quite important there. Moving into Australia on the 30th, building permits, which were quite important, and uh, as we go through, um, uh, EM, oh, Euro confidence, economic confidence, industrial confidence out as well, and uh, the S&P case Schiller index uh, and consumer confidence uh, obviously coming out on the same day, that's 30th of August, uh, which uh, is which is the Tuesday. Um, FOMC minutes, let's see how that goes. Now on um, Wednesday, yeah, on Wednesday, we've got uh, private sector in Australia, a um, little bit of unemployment in Germany, consumer prices in Europe. In the States, we've got uh, factory orders, some infantry data on oil, and as we move into fr uh, Thursday, uh, Thursday, 1st of September, uh, PMI for China. Quite a bit of data out there in China. Uh, GDP in Germany. Non-farm productivity, uh, unit labour costs, uh, there's a bit of data there, obviously, in the States, ISM in and construction. The key, uh, I think, in the T1 data is out September the 2, which is the Friday. We've got trade, trade balance in Australia, but in the States, you've got the unemployment rate um, and all the sundry data that comes with that. 
So uh, if anything there, uh, probably expect a, uh, a quite a, a busy week. We have some very good data to get our teeth into and uh, probably expect um, a little bit of volatility. But overall, I like what Bernanke's had um, and I think as we lead into that FOMC meeting, uh, we might get um, other forms of stimulus starting to come out which will actually help the market. That's about it from me. Hope everyone has a great week um, and uh, we'll soon talk to you later. Bye for now.